Hello, and welcome to Toastmasters in the Community. I'm your host, Fran Okeson, and I would like to just announce that today is our last meeting for the, 19, for the 2017 year, and we have great speakers today, and we hope you enjoy the show. With me today is a very good old friend, Liam, William Gill, but we call him Liam because that's what he wants to be called. And when someone wants to be called by a nickname, even if it is part of a fish, we go along with what he says. And I feel very comfortable teasing Liam because he has ribbed me many times during the years, correct? That's correct, man. Correct. And he keeps, keeps doing it just for the fun of it. So let's just get on with the show and we'll see what's going to happen today. It's a beautiful sunny day outside, a little bit chilly, but here we go. I usually open with my opening speech just to get it out of the way so then I can enjoy the rest of the show. I've decided today to do a speech called A Baker's Dozen Ways to Earn Your CC Award. CC is the competent communicator. It's the first book that you get as a new member. I make these programs Usually I, print the, I get them printed in the District 83 newsletter, The Voice, as educational programs. I like to do these, and it gives people an idea of ways that they can advance through the different manuals. After you complete the basic manuals, there are your choice of 15 advanced manuals, and I have talked about them before, and I'm sure that when the new Pathways program comes in, in a few months, we'll be hearing about new things there. So let me just go through my list of things that will help you get through the basic manual. A lot of people are afraid to start with Toastmasters because they say, I don't know how to give a speech. Well, if you can talk, you can talk, and that, it, that can become a speech as long as you follow the guidelines. So the first one is, don't miss club meetings. One of the hardest things for anybody to progress in Toastmasters is if you just pick and choose when you decide to come to a meeting. If you come on a regular basis, not only do you get a chance to overcome your fear of nervousness, but you can listen to your fellow members in the club and pick up ideas of what they're doing. Oh, I like the way they said that, or I like the way they researched that. And this way we learn from each other all the time. I am going to talk about a young man who will be on speaking later on, who wanted to know about, in fact, he's probably going to join one of my other clubs. But he wants to know if we had a club for new members, for people who are very shy new members. And he was looking for a beginner's Toastmasters club. We don't have that. And what I told him was, he's taking a trip now, but then he's going to join one of my clubs. I said, what you do is you join the club, and if you need, we'll assign you a mentor who will guide you through the steps. Or you can keep a logbook with speech ideas. I do that all the time. I have post-it notes next to every chair in my house where I sit down for any reason. Because when I get an idea, I write it down, then I go and I add it to my list of things I want to research. You can cut articles out of newspapers, magazines, and develop them into speeches. I, always, I do read the advance. I don't read it online because it's very hard if you read online to tear an article out. So I like to tear things out. And I never quite know when I'm going to use them, but eventually I'll find a speech that will lend itself to that. Speak about your family, your job, your hobbies, or your avocations. Everybody has something in their minds they can speak about. We meet in, in the lobby out here between 9 and 9.30 at the CTV studio on Staten Island, and everybody's talking, everybody's talking, and you're learning about each other. Why not pick those ideas and put them in a speech? I was in a group the other day, and this is the way you could start. I was in a group the other day, and I heard the most interesting story and then you can build it onto what you want to talk about yourself. Choose a theme and develop it into 10 speeches. There are 10 speeches in the basic manual. 10 speeches, why not, for an example, why not talk about your teachers? If you've gone to kindergarten, now you start preschool, what, at, I think two and a half with your grandchildren, two and a half, three and a half? That's correct. Pretty old, yeah, pretty. All right, but you have teachers in grade school. Were they all fair? Did you like one especially well? I can still remember Sister John Ignatia in my grammar school. I used to go to the convent, knock on the door, and ask if she wanted to come out and play with me. I lived two blocks away, and it was a simple walk. And sometimes she came out and talked to me for a while. High school, a little more serious. But I had a nun there that was great. And on the second meeting this afternoon, I'll be talking about some, the place I went yesterday. And it sort of ties in with what Sister Rita Claire taught me in Mary Lewis Academy. All right, speak about comparison shopping. How many times do you need an appliance in your home? 
whether it be a stove, washing machine, refrigerator, do you just go and go to the counter and say, I have a check here, can you have them deliver a washing machine? No. You do some scouting around, ask your friends, you know, what, what kind of a washing, washing machine do you have? Do you like it? Is there something you don't like about it? Major household pur uh, purchases. All right. Even ovens, even cars. Cars, you have to be very careful about cars. Make sure it's a car that you can drive. If you don't know how to drive stick shift like I don't, I would need a car with the automatic. Compare cultural holidays and observances. This is prime in Toastmasters. We have so many people in Toastmasters around the world that come from so many different places. And sometimes even people in your own hometown, they don't have to come from other places, but their job might send them to other places. For years, Ken Raftery will meet later on, Imogene James, we've gone to the international conventions. And it's fantastic, the people that you can meet from around the world. I remember one time a little man from, they brought him over, a little man from Taiwan, I believe, and he said, are you the lady with all the DTMs? And I burst out laughing. He said, somebody told me I have to have a picture with you. So it was our international president, I believe at the time, uh, Alfred Herzing, and I said, well, I do have DTMs, but so do other people. He said, but you have more. So I, I got his picture. He went back a happy man. I was happy meeting a stranger from another country. I thought that was fun. So cultural holidays and observances, always important. I have a young Jewish woman in my, well, she's in two of my clubs, and it's so wonderful to be able to talk to her because being a Catholic, there are things about Judaism I never knew I didn't know. And I, when I found out that I could talk to her very freely and she just talks straight back to me, I feel very comfortable asking her things. And I do ask because that's one thing. Bigotry would stop if we just talked to people, find out that they, you know, they all get up on one side of the bed or the other. So just think about that. Speak about the history of your house or hometown. I've been living in my house 58 and a half years. My house goes way, way back. My telephone number now is, not, uh, what is it, 718-984. In those days, it was Tottenville 8, whatever the end of it was. But I still have the last part of my telephone number. How about doing a book or a movie review? That's a lot of fun. I don't go to the movies anymore. I just don't care for them. I don't care for these movies. I like the older movies. And I do love Blue Bloods. I wish I could get Tom Selleck to come on the show. I would love to. Wouldn't that be nice if Tom Selleck could come on and be the police commissioner? Then I'd have to have somebody like you come on and you could quiz him. I don't want to have competition with Tom. Well, you've got the wrong color hair, so that wouldn't really <laughs> help. But anyway, now Tom Selleck, when he, when he comes on, I had to stay up late last night to watch him. And if I do have to miss a show, Peter always tapes it and then I see it because I, I, love, I love that show. And I think that's great. All right. Now, also, you could talk about good luck charms. I'll bet everybody in the room here in the studio, even though we can't see them because they're in the dark, I bet every one of you has some lucky charm. See, I like the number three because I went to grammar school with nuns, high school with nuns, Hunter College, no nuns. But if there was ever a contest and the nun said, pick a number, I would always take number three because of the Trinity. Nuns love the Trinity. So every, when you're dealing with a religious person, just say number three, they love it. So, and the other parts of my clues are, ask your club officers to help you if you need help. Otherwise, give me a call. I'll help you and walk you through whatever speeches you need. And that's the end of a baker's dozen usually equals 13. And that's that. Okay, and now we're ready. All right. And now, oh, Liam, you have to really open your ears now because you're the evaluator. Our next speaker is past District 46 Governor Imogene James from District 46. And Imogene, okay, there you are. You're doing speech number four from the basic manual. And let's see, your title is What This Season Means to Me. Let's all welcome Imogene James. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and of course our audience. What this season means to me. It really means quite a bit. It creates so much excitement for me and those around. It does something to our personalities. Something about this season 
brings the best out in each one of us. We love to share, we love to sing the songs of this particular holiday. Silent Night is my favorite, one of my favorites. I sing in the choir at my church, and I've been in that choir for probably 30 years. And one of the, one of the memories I have of that choir during this season was our choir director, Dr. Ralph. Dr. Ralph really wanted us to get everything right, and he did. And you know what? He was a taskmaster, but what happened is I learned to love and appreciate music. I even learned to read music to some degree, thanks to Dr. Ralph. Dr. Ralph, the toughest thing that, in my opinion, that we had to learn was the Hallelujah Chorus. That's going back quite a number of years. And every Christmas, we sing the Hallelujah Chorus. Of course, we always have to go back and rehearse because it's been a year since we sang it. But it always comes out so lovely, and I look forward to it. And sometimes on Channel 21 or Channel 13, when they have all of the choirs on during Christmas, I'm looking to see who's singing the Hallelujah Chorus so that I can sing along with them. I'm so proud that our choir has learned to sing the, the Hallelujah Chorus. And all of the other songs that were created for the holidays, it just brings such a memory to my mind about all of the things that have happened over the years. I grew up with seven siblings, and I think one of the most memorable holiday Christmases for me was just sitting there with my siblings, opening presents, giggling, talking, running back and forth, couldn't wait to open out presents. Typical children, right? We're all like that. It's the excitement of not knowing what's in that package, that we have to open it. We really want to open it before Christmas. But no, the parents don't allow that. And thank God they don't, because the excitement is there until the last moment. I also like, I like the fact that families get together. All of my siblings live in a different state. So I only remember maybe two Christmases where all of us were together. Now, when we're together, forget about it. We're talking, we're going down memory lane. We do an awful lot of that. What I find really funny is that each one of us has a different aspect of what happened on a certain event or a certain day. One of my younger brothers, he's so great with the detail of what happened. And sometimes I look at him and go, what? When was that? When did that happen? Oftentimes, I don't remember anything he's talking about. I'm sure you're going to have some memories, too, and you're going to share them this holiday season with your family because I like the enthusiasm and the buzz that it creates. And I hope that that's the same for you, that you have some memories that are carried on from year to year, some traditions. So I invite you to enjoy the holiday as I do. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Eugenia. I wish you had done a little singing there like you did the last time you were on, because you have a lovely, lovely voice. Said don't sing. <laughs> Who said not to sing? Brand. Who? Me? Oh, no, I like her singing. I didn't ask you to sing the whole Hallelujah Chorus, though. Oh, please. <laughs> please. All right, our next speaker is our number two cameraman. Hello, Kevin. We missed you the last Hallelujah. What? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you don't sing like Imogene. Anyway, and we've missed your last couple my, my of meetings. My voice is a little bit deeper, just a little. Oh, well, that's all right. All right, now, Kevin, you're doing speech number three from the basic manual, Get to the Point, and your evaluator is Liam. Yes, we gave Liam a double job today because he doesn't come on that often, so we want to make sure that he remembered what it was like to be on TV. He'll be looking for that paycheck after this show, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and your title is Why Become a Toastmaster? So let's all welcome Kevin Thompson. Studio audience, audience at home, Liam and Fran. Now you look at this TV show on a regular basis, and I know you're a fan, so I'm here 
to answer that question. Why become a Toastmaster? Why should you consider becoming a Toastmaster? Now you get an opportunity to see how much fun we have here every month. But that's not why you should become a Toastmaster. You have gifts and talents that are untapped. And for less than a cup of coffee a week, not a day, a week, you can become a Toastmaster. Now, what does that mean? That means that you'll have an opportunity to review the communication manual and the leadership manual. And in doing that, you'll be developing your skills, both speaking and leadership. But that's not all. You have an opportunity to evaluate other people, just like Liam will be evaluating this speech today, and learn by what? Listening. And at every Toastmasters meeting, and you'll see here today, you'll have people that are speakers, you'll have people that are evaluators, and there's always a table topic opportunity. So even if you don't have a speaking role as a speaker or evaluator, you have the opportunity to speak as a person participating in table topics. And at every Toastmasters club around the world, did I mention that Toastmasters is international? It's part of the name, Toastmasters International. You have an opportunity to develop your speaking skills, your leadership skills, and being able to speak off the cuff. Why is speaking off the cuff so important? Have you ever been on an interview? If you have, or if you haven't, and you're going to be going on one soon, you should join a Toastmasters club because Table Topics is speaking off the cuff. And that gives you the opportunity to stand up and answer a question that you have no idea what they're going to ask. And trust me, when you're standing up here with Fran as a Table Topics master, you have no idea what she's going to ask. But you have a one to two minute opportunity to respond. And in an interview, that's what you have. The opportunity to respond to a question that the interviewer is going to ask you, you have no idea what to do. By joining a Toastmasters club, you have the opportunity to practice this at least twice a month because most Toastmasters clubs meet twice a month. So you have 24 opportunities in the year just to develop that skill. So if you attended a Toastmasters meeting and you never did a speaking role, as an evaluator or table topics master or a speaker, you still have at the minimum 24 opportunities to speak as a participant in table topics. And what that does is that it provides an opportunity for you to feel calm and relaxed when presented with a question that you don't know what they're going to ask you. And in an interview situation, that is invaluable because you are positioned to speak as a person that knows exactly what they're talking about. And in that case, you make a connection with that interviewer. And just like today, my intention is to make a connection with you in the audience. In addition, having the opportunity to develop a speech and speak it provides you an opportunity to communicate the value that you have to share with others. And the best way to do that is what, without ahs and ums and filler words, and that way the person gets that message. That's what we do here at Toastmasters. So we count those ahs and ums and filler words to provide you immediate feedback to determine how well you did in your presentation. So I would like to invite you to become a Toastmaster. Don't just sit at home and watch the TV. Get on out. Find a Toastmasters club near you. Remember, it's international, and you can find one anywhere in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Very nice. Thank you. And now I'm going to ask Imogene to come back up. And we don't have Imogene on the show all the time because she comes from, I know it's no longer Amityville, Imogene. Where, where do you live? It's Amityville. It is Amityville still. <laughs> okay. Did you ever go to my old summer home out there? You know, I did not have a chance. I'm uh, sorry. You will. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I told her where I grew up, I spent my summers, and she said, oh, I know that area. So I asked her to go and say hello to the people who live there now and let me know who's there. All right, Imogene, you're doing speech number one now, and this is good following Kevin's speech because he spoke about joining Toastmasters. This is the very first speech in the basic manual that everybody has to start with. So I'm very happy that you're the one doing the icebreaker. You also have five minutes. Past District Governor Paul Scharf is going to be your evaluator, and your title is Two States, Different Lessons. Let's all welcome Past District 46th Governor Imogene James. Thank you, Fran and Liam. Fellow Toastmasters, and to our audience, of course. Two states, two different lessons. So I thought. I grew up in Arkansas. I spent my first 18 years in Arkansas. I couldn't wait to leave Arkansas. <laughs> so I thought. I had an offer to come to Long Island. I was in the first year of college. My uncle said, would you like to stay and complete the year or just go to New York? Well, I don't have to tell you what my answer was as a 19, 18-year-old. I want to go to New York. I've heard about it. Let me see it for myself. So we did do that. In retrospect, Arkansas set the pace and contributed to who and what I am today. It took me quite some time to learn that. By that, I mean I learned responsibility at a very young age with seven siblings and me being the oldest girl and the second child, I had to take the lead when my mother became ill. One of the things my mother did teach me, she taught each of us how to clean the house. How to, we had a schedule. We had to clean up on every Saturday, just get up and get it done. I learned to do that. However, my favorite, my favorite household chore was ironing. Boy, I could snap those sleeves and get that iron out. I'm so proud of the way things looked after I ironed them. Now, this didn't happen overnight. My mother had to straighten me out a few times. But it is still one of my favorite chores. However, they also taught us to chip in and help others. So I know that when I'm at someone else's house, I become what my mother taught me to be. I have to help clean up. I have to help wash dishes. In fact, most people say, Imogene, get out of the kitchen. You're a guest. And I say, I can't help myself. I feel my mother looking over my shoulder, telling me to get up and help. I'm joking about that. She did teach us that because it's a quality I've never lost. And I even learned to cook at a very young age. Barbecue ribs, fried chicken. I'm a southern girl. I can't help it. Biscuits and jelly. We, we made those from scratch every Saturday morning. We got up and made biscuits. Wasn't a big deal to me. I just accepted it because I loved what I was doing. That has carried me through. Segway to New York City. I love New York City. I've learned to appreciate it. I saw my first Broadway show. I was hooked. Now, this is going to take me back, and you're going to, some are going to smile, and some are going to say, huh? My first Broadway show was applause, and I loved it. I was hooked from that point. Now I find that I must, I absolutely must go to a Broadway show at least twice a year. They've gotten pretty expensive, but that's okay. I save my little pennies, and I make sure I go to a show. In closing, I found that my past and my present combined to make me who I am today. Sometimes we may not be as accepting of our past as we think, and we don't want to go. But you know what? Arkansas is my home. And if anyone asks me, I say, I'm from Arkansas, and I'm very proud of it. So I asked you to consider, where are you from? Are you from two different states? Be proud of who you, where you're from. 
and always go back and visit relatives because I have like 100 million relatives still in Arkansas and I look forward to going and visiting my cousins and my brothers are there, two of my brothers are there. So as we get older, we'll find, you'll ex like me, you'll start to accept the fact that you are a combination of two, two states, Imogene, accept it and live with it. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Imogene. Found out some things I didn't know about you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, and now our final speaker at this segment of the meeting is Kevin Thompson. See what happens when you stay away. I, I know, you know, you have other responsibilities, but when I don't see you on a monthly basis, I have to bring you on a couple of times just to go home and feel comfortable now for another 30 days. But you will be here for the January show, correct? Well, yes, and thank you, Fran. I thought you wanted the audience to have a deja vu experience. <laughs> well, what can I tell you, Kevin? What can I tell you? When you come in, you just light up the light. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, You're Fred. welcome. I have to be kind to you. You give nice kisses, but today you stopped and you gave about three people kisses before you got to me. I saved the best for last, Fred. <laughs> oh, is that what? Kevin, thank you so much. Good. <laughs> you, can never, you can never catch him without having him come right back at it again. Well, just that's try a, harder. That's <laughs> a sign of a good Toastmaster, and you're doing table topics. Oh, We're boy, giving oh. them an example right now. <laughs> okay. Kevin, you're doing speech number two from the basic manual to organize your speech. An opening, a body, and a conclusion, just in case you wanted to be reminded. Linda Isaacs, a DTM, is going to evaluate you. I don't know if you were here when Linda started to come to the show. Very good. Okay. And I like your title, even though it almost went to a second line. The most powerful thing you can give or share. Let's all welcome Kevin Thompson. Thank you again, Fran. Studio audience, audience at home, Fran and Liam. So what's the most powerful thing that you can give or share with someone? I'm going to give and share that gift with you. The most powerful thing that you can give and share is something that you have on a regular basis. In fact, you spend it every single day. In fact, you spend it every single hour. In fact, you spend it every minute. You spend it every second. What is that thing? That thing is time. You spend time. And your time, the time that you spend, is the most valuable, most powerful thing that you can give or share with someone else. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I am a grandfather. I know a lot of you don't believe it, but it's true. I have three grandsons now. And one of the most valuable things that I can give and share with them is my time. So I was just recently down in Mississippi, that's where my grandsons are now, and spent time with my two oldest grandsons, which are eight and seven, and my newest grandson, which was just born in September on Labor Day. And that was the most valuable thing that I could do. I was down there, took two weeks off from work to spend time with my daughter, to help her with the baby, and also spend time with them. And that was the most valuable thing I could do. Why? Because everybody can't take time off from work, and her husband had to go back to work, and she was going to be there with the baby, and taking care of babies is one of the things, one of my gifts, one of the things that I do better than any, everyone else. And, you know, people don't, you know, don't even believe it, but it's true. And when she was a little baby, her mother couldn't even burp her. I was the one that burped her all the time. So I have, I am the baby master. And that was one of the most valuable things that I could do for her, was to spend my time with her and the new baby and my grandsons, which I don't get to see as often as I like to. And so when they came home, the first thing they wanted to do was to play with grandpa. And that was spending the time. My middle grandson, it was my job to take him to and from school. He looked forward to it, and I did too. Because back and forth, 
in the car. We'd have conversations and talk, play games and what have you. It was about sharing the time and spending the time. And I'm telling you this because this is the one thing, the most powerful thing that you can do, the most powerful, most powerful thing that you can share, the most powerful thing that you can give to someone else that they'll never forget. And the fact that you're spending that time is something that's priceless because once that time is spent, it can never be recovered. So I'm going to ask you, how are you spending your time? How are you giving your time to others? How are you sharing the time that you have in a day with someone else? It could even be a stranger, somebody that you're passing on the street that you smile with and say hello. It is the act of actually spending those seconds, minutes, moments with that individual that makes all the difference in the world. Just consider, your smile might have been the only one that they saw that day. Your good morning might turn their day around. They might have been having a horrible day until you looked and smiled and said good morning. The time that you spend and how you spend it is one of the most powerful things that you can do for someone else. So I'd like to encourage you to spend the time. I'd like to encourage you to give the time. I'd like to encourage you to use your time to benefit others. And the secret in doing that is that when you do, you'll also benefit yourself. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Just don't stay away too long anymore. Okay, and we'll go to the evaluation portion of this meeting. I was the first speaker, and Ken Raftery was my evaluator. Ken, you always sneak up there so fast when I go to watch you walking up. You're always there. Mm. Why don't you tell us what you thought about my speech, Baker's Dozen? Yes, thank you, Fran, fellow Toastmasters and viewers. Yes, I realized during Fran's speech that a lot of the attributes of a good Toastmaster are the same as being a good student. Strong attendance, confidence, practice. So, starting with the questions, how did the speaker make the talk relevant to the audience? Well, it was certainly relevant to everyone here. We're all Toastmasters, and the viewers at home might be considering joining the club, so it was certainly appropriate. Describe the impact on, on you. Uh, it inspired me to stick around in Toastmasters for at least another 20 plus years. <laughs> and there are a lot of lines that I really liked. I wanted to highlight them. I agree with your movie comment. I haven't been to the movie theater in two years. I saw the last Star Wars movie. I haven't been back since. And maybe I'll see the one that's coming out this month. And I really like the line about, you said something about bigotry would end if we got to know each other. I totally agree. I think the average person who says they're racist against certain groups, they probably don't know anyone from that group really well. So I, I wanted to give you a standing ovation for that. And you gave stories for each point you made, like you talked about teachers, et cetera. So that was very good. And I really liked your line where you said something about, I never knew that I didn't know something. You're right. You never know what you're going to learn by coming to a Toastmasters meeting. What was the most effective part of the demonstration, your expertise in this area? And one suggestion for improvement, since you did mention that I went to the International Convention one year, you should have plugged the city, New Orleans, a city that I've been back to about 15 to 20 times since then. And if you've never been there, I suggest you go as well. Uh, I think it was a dinner roll. A dinner roll. It was stale, and when he <laughs> went to throw it to feed a bird, it bounced it along the right. ground. No, we had a lot of fun that, that weekend. That was yeah. really great. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next time I go to New Orleans, I'll let you know, and you can drive me there. Right. Okay. And our next speaker was Imogene. And Liam, you're her evaluator, and why don't you tell us what you thought about, let's see, what the season means to Imogene. Hello. Thank you, friend. Okay. Hello, Toastmasters, especially Imogene. Imogene is speaking on what the season means to us. I know Imogene is a very gifted speaker and a great evaluator. She spoke well about the season, not only with the words she used, but her facial expressions. You could see, you could see that she meant every word that she said. She brought out a couple of good points that we could take from it. 
And one is she brought us back in time for many of us when our parents didn't let us open the, the gifts. A little bit of drama. Just could not wait. And you just even those few seconds, and then you were able to open up. The excitement of opening the gifts she reinforced for us. <clears throat> she also brought a good point up that many of us failed to realize is she mentioned taskmaster. We need taskmasters. And she had that in Dr. Ralph. If it wasn't for Dr. Ralph being a great taskmaster, she probably may have not been as successful with the choir and enjoying the moments of singing those songs. <clears throat> I enjoyed, as I always have enjoyed, Emma Jean James's speech and her personality. Great job, Emma Jean. I can't think of any points to, uh, to bring further, bring something out to you can prove. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liam. And since you did that so well, I'm going to let you evaluate Kevin's speech. Good, good thing you brought some extra paper along I kept, today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fellow okay. Toastmasters, special Kevin. Kevin's very, when he goes to the lectern, he stands tall, looks directly in the audience, he uses great gestures. He has, he has spoken well, he speaks outside of Toastmasters groups, so he has all that other advanced ability. The other thing what he brought here, he's excited about Toastmasters, and so he explained to, to the audience, he looked directly in there why they should belong to the audience, belong to the Toastmasters, with almost everything he had. My first meeting with, was, with Kevin was in a, a human speech contest in New Jersey. He used all the techniques, of course. Kevin beat me, but it was a good job he did. <clears throat> he did a good job. I kept, Kevin, as I said, you stand tall. And he's directed fellow Toastmasters. Thank you very much, Liam. Okay, now you can take a rest and enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> all right, and now Imogene. Speaker, let's see her evaluated this time around. I'm just trying to. F is Paul Schaff, past District 83, our first? I always have to add, he's our first District 83 governor. That's right. The directors didn't start until later. It's terrible when you're on the crux, and some of us are district governors, and the new ones are district directors, and it gets all jumbled up. Hello, Paul. Good morning, Fran. Uh, presenting. Imogene's evaluation on what is in the manual, the icebreaker, which is her first speech. As you heard in the past, and as you can see from her presentation, this was not her first speech. This is probably her, I don't know, 10, 20, I don't have enough fingers and toes to count. The presentation was fantastic. Uh, it talked about, I put the eyes on, talked about uh, two states and different lessons. She basically started an opening with the state that she started from and the current state that she's in, which is how she ended th the presentation. Everything she did was right. There, w there wasn't anything that I could say that wasn't good. She didn't use uh, notes. Uh, she spoke fantastically. Her voice was great. Her inflection was great. The only thing which is very minor, and it's a little tough when you're on TV, is instead of me talking to Imogene and she's over here, I should be talking to you people out there. And that's, I have that same problem. Uh, she did a lot of moving her head instead of looking right at the camera and looking at you people and talking to you about what you're saying. That was the only minor thing. Everything that else she did was right. As I said before, no notes, an open, a body, a conclusion, gave us some great information, and I look forward, as usual, to future presentations from her. Madam Thank Tosin. you very much, Paul. <laughs> and now Linda Isaacs is going to evaluate Kevin's second speech. Linda? Obviously, an experienced 
speaker. Um, the project that he did was the second speech in the Competent Communication Manual uh, titled, the project title is to organize your speech. And I think as speakers we can get so invested in what we're going to talk about that we can become disorganized if we're not careful. So I think the principles of the project apply to everyone, whether they're new speakers or long-time speakers. Regardless, Kevin certainly accomplished the goals of the speech uh, very, very well. He gave us a very intriguing title. I couldn't help but wonder what he was going to be telling us about. Um, once he established that the gift we can give others is time, he gave us very good examples, his time with his grandchildren, and encouraged us to do likewise, impressing upon us how much of an impact we could make if we do. I did wonder when he mentioned his grandchildren why he was here instead of with his grandchildren on this Saturday, but it turns out his grandchildren are in Mississippi, so that made sense. The only constructive comment I could come up with was to be careful about the use of and and stringing sentences together. There were times that pauses would have been, a, have been more effective. But having said that, um, it was an excellent speech and one that encourages me to go out and put those principles into practice. Fran? Thank you very, very, very much, Linda. Very astute. Now we come to my vengeance time. Take all topics. I love doing this. <laughs> anyway, all right. Our first responder to table topics is Joan Marizio. Okay. Joan, I have a nice question for you. All right. If you could go back in time and change one thing in your life, what would it be, Joan? Joan Marizio. This is not fair. This is not fair, Madden Table Topics. I was this before, I think, by the very same person. And I think I mentioned that I would go to college. I missed college. I took up secretarial school, uh, practices in school. I got a complete business course, even business machines down to the key punch machine. And I felt like what I learned in high school, this is what they're teaching in college now, although key punch machines are long gone, it would be a whole new thing with the computer systems. But what I find interesting is how much things are changing so quickly that if you get that college degree now, you find yourself going on and on and going for further and further degrees and learning more and more as, mon as much as the mind can take. So that's a very interesting question. I've been asked it before, but I think I answered a little more differently according to the computer age that we're stuck in now and forever. <laughs> okay, Joan, thank you very much. Isaac, art thou there? Ah, there you are. We let Isaac come out of the control room once in a while just to make sure he's still uh, awake. Isaac, very important question now. This is 2017. Ten years from now, Isaac, I might not be here. What will be the most significant thing you'll remember about 2017? Isaac Gilbenovich. An interesting question. Thank First you. of all, I sincerely wish that you are here in 10 years and I'm here in 10 years and we're still having good time and we're still able, breathing and able. But what would I remember from 2017? Hmm. It's a lot of things to remember, but my personal one, I don't know, I don't know. Things about my family, things about Toastmaster, things about life, but nothing just pops in my mind right away. It's just life, it's everyday life, it's getting up in the morning, meeting with people, giving them information, I'm an instructor, and uh, just doing my best, doing my best with my daughter, with my Toastmasters, with, uh, with life. I'm sorry, nothing just pops in, nothing specific. Okay, that's okay. I thought you'd be very philosophical there for our last meeting in this year. That's all right, I'll get a better question next time. Oh, hello, Lucy. Have you been helping with the timing with Joan? Yes. Good, thank you. Lucy, short question for you, okay? What do you like best about this upcoming Christmas season? Lucy Kahn, whose husband makes the best brownies ever that we have every month here. Madame Table Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters and viewing audience. What I really want to have this Christmas season is to see all my family, and hopefully it will come and be united with everyone, like a reunion. I just came from Florida, but I, re I, 
have a reunion with my three girls, but now I hope that they will come this Christmas. But I don't think so because we just have a reunion with my three girls, so now I'm going to have a reunion with my three boys. So hopefully we're going to have a very happy Christmas and uh, have a nice uh, time with my grandchildren, just like Kevin, and hopefully they don't use their electronic thing because they're always using their iPhone and their iPad, so hopefully they will get rid of that and just talk with us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Lucy. Now I have a gentleman who came today for the very first time. He happens to be the president of the East Side Toastmasters Club in District 46. Oh, Ken, I didn't have you down then, did I? Yeah. I did? Oh, I'm sorry. Table topics? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That was not done on that show. All right. Ken. Oh, you know what, Ken? The, the, I don't believe Aida showed up today. Is that why you came up? No, I'm on. The, 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 I, have, I have Aida Murphy ahead of you. Is Aida in the audience? He should, no. he should be on this. He should be here. Yeah, that's what. Okay. Can wrap right. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I crossed off. Uh, Jay, get prepared because I did. When Aida said she couldn't come for the first show, I did put you in. I just forgot to tell you earlier. All right, Ken. Yeah, I have your question for you. What would you? I know that you're very adventurous, so you have to listen carefully. What would you like to do during the upcoming holidays? Visit, uh, visit the Radio City Music Hall, the spectacular show with the famous Rockettes, or take a ride on the Circle Lines. Christmas cruise, or something I never knew about, visit Gulliver's Gate near Times Square. What would you like to do, Ken Raftery? Thank you, Fran. Yeah, I have to think about that. I, I don't even know if I've heard of Gulliver's Gate. I never did, but I got on the internet and I figured I'd try to stump you a little bit. Yeah, and I was right by Rockefeller Center the other day. I still like to do my walks. And the Circle Line cruise I took a few years ago, but I think it would be a little too cold. But th the problem with places like Rockefeller Center and the Empire State Building is you pay these ridiculous tourist prices. So I have to say an adventure I want to take, and you never know, I may take it next year, and maybe I'll do a speech here talking about it, is to hike to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Wow. And I have a little bit more time off this school year, as maybe you'll hear later. So I just might do that. So. Not everything has to be done in New York State or in this country either, for that matter. I don't Very know if good. I really answered your question. But, but get on Google and see what that Gulliver's Gate, it mm. sounds like a, a little village there. I thought maybe that would interest you, something different. Because okay. I know you like to walk. Yeah. Okay, very good. Jay, are you willing to answer a question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. It's so dark down there. Okay, now this is Jay Suknanan, and we're just meeting for the first time today. And thank you, Isaac, for bringing Jay from Brooklyn. And Jay, you're an advanced communicator bronze and a CL and I know you told me that in about a week you're filing the next levels and I said well they're not done now so the next time you come on you'll have your new designations okay yes. very happy to meet you but Same I'm going way. to give you this okay all right this is a question I had for the lady I think I have you uh, later on too we're, we're meeting we're all meeting you for the first time here on Staten Island today and would you tell us why you joined your very first Toastmasters Club Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you. So the reason I joined my first Toastmasters Club is because I knew I wanted to create an impact in this world and to stop suffering and to help provide food, water, and shelter throughout the world to places that don't have access to them. And I, the way I saw it is I would have to speak to governments to get use of their land to help their own people. And I feel every good world leader is a good speaker. So uh, that's why I originally got into it. I enjoy the process. It's surrounded by a lot of positive people, and I'm enjoying the way I'm going, the new things I'm seeing, and how my vision is getting broader, and my purpose is getting more directed. So thank you. Very, very nice, Jay. We'll talk during the break, all right? Thank you. Now I came up with two questions because I realized that we were going to have a little bit of time. Imogene, would you please come? What? Mr. Imogene. What? Who's this? That's Paul. Paul, yeah. <laughs> I don't have you on here for table topics. Well, he's up there now, so I asked yeah. him a question. Well, why did you come up? Can, you, can I take a question? Well, I had two other people here. Oh, you did? Well, 
They're on my paper. Oh. All right. If I have time, I'll call you. I'll okay. think of something for you, Paul. Yeah, please don't do that. Just wait until I call people. Because, Imogene, I had a question that you'll enjoy, and I'm going to embarrass myself a little bit. I've known Imogene for so many years. I've come to love her like a sister. But one day, we went to the district conference out in Long Island, okay, and my group, this, uh, they, the hotel was renovating, so they told us we had to go to a hotel in the neighborhood to eat. Do you remember that one? Yes. And I was there with my group of friends. And you walked in with the tops of the district and sat next to us. And as you turned around to greet us, I smiled at you because I liked you. But you realized I didn't have my dentures in, and you went in front of everybody. Oh, you didn't put your dentures in. <laughs> now, were you embarrassed? For embarrassing me like that in a public restaurant, tell the folks, how did you, how'd you get out of that one? I think I made sure I always had my dentures in when I was near Imogene. <laughs> Thank you, Fran, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Fran has a vivid memory. I don't even remember that. It, that doesn't even sound like me that I would do that, embarrass someone in front of everyone. <laughs> hey, that was back in the days. Let's just say that was back in the days when I don't think I would have done that, but if I did. <laughs> I can't remember what happened I had yesterday, to grow up. but I can remember back. I had some growing up to do after that point. <laughs> I think that's probably what it was, Fran. And I think we are close enough friends that I could say that jokingly to her. So I'm hoping that other people didn't hear her say that. And I don't, I don't think, I can't see me doing that in front of a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sure I was teasing her, as we often do. And I think friends can allow errors every once in a while and still love each other. Madam Toastmaster. It was Brad Schilling's conference. Ah, remember? I remember. Yes, I oh, do. You remember that, but yes. Oh, yeah. Selective memory. I wanted to forget. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Imogene. Okay. All right, Liam, I have the question, and then I'll think of something for Paul. All right. I know you very well, and I was wondering while you were sitting here listening to Kevin's speech about time and with his grandchildren, and I know what you do. Why don't you tell us what went through your mind when you were watching and listening to Kevin talk about his relationship with his grandchildren? Well, it was an appropriate speech, and Kevin believed in it. And I notice every day, <clears throat> I may get up at 5 o'clock before you know it, it's 7 o'clock. Where did the time go? Even if you're using it fruitfully, where did the time go? Oftentimes with children, well, it... It's good time to spend with children. I spend a lot of time with my grandchildren. And there's quite a pleasure in it, and it's quite tiring. But yes, where does the time go? You can ask the question, what do you do with your time? Where do you watch TV? Do you read a book? It's going. <clears throat> Even now, it's 1230 today. Where, where did the time go today? So yes, Kevin selected a, a topic to speak to the audience, and he did a good job. Yes, he did. Thank you very, very much. All right, and do we have much more time? Oh, we do have four minutes. Oh, four minutes. Okay, Paul, I'll give you a question. It's coming on the Christmas season, which we know. Mm -hmm. All right, there are other seasons throughout the year. We just had Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. then we had Halloween. Sure. We've had Easter, Fourth of July. And what had, which of those holidays gave the biggest impact to you this year? Paul Paradise. Thank you. I Fellow Toastmasters, I think this year it was Thanksgiving, uh, partially because I went to visit my mother, uh, she's 91, and I went to visit her in assisted living. Um, I'm grateful that she's still alive and that she's doing very, very well. They, uh, she's in assisted living, but she uh, moved her to a renovated room, and she's very, very happy, and it's just a joy to spend some time with her. Um, I, a couple of weeks, my brother's coming from uh, Switzerland, especially to visit her, and we're going to spend some more time with her. So I'm just grateful for having her alive with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. the clock over there. What is it? It's 3.07. 3.07. Three 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 minutes. Minutes. All right. If someone else wants to walk up, Liam, can you ca come up with a question for the next person as somebody walks up? No? I should. <laughs> well, who is that? Did somebody come up yet? Who is this? It's Kevin. It's nobody but me. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're more than nobody. You know that. Kevin, if you had to cook Christmas dinner, what would you make? Fellow Cats Toastmasters, your tongue. Fellow Toastmasters and Fran and Liam, 
The answer is very simple, and I don't know if I can speak for it about a, about a minute, but the answer is reservations. <laughs> That's exactly what I would make. Reservations because speaking is my gift. Eating is my gift. Sampling is my gift. But actually cooking, not so much. Unless it's on the grill. Now, if it's on the grill, you got a chance. But if you put me behind the stove and open the oven, if it's not already prepared and I could take it out the freezer and pop it in the oven, then uh, you're really going to receive potluck. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. If one more person wants to, we have just a shade over one minute. No. Nope. All right. Then you and I. Well, I'm looking at the clock and it says 140. Closing remarks. Closing remarks. My closing remarks? I thought this was a very nice show. What do you think? You stepped in where you were asked. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. It was the first time I was up here. I didn't say too much when I was up here. But I enjoyed the, uh, the experience of being up here. Of course, listening to the speeches and the evaluations, I was quite impressed. Mm -hmm. I was quite impressed with Linda Isaacs. I never met her before. Her, her evaluations, mm -hmm. right on the button. Oh, yes, and yes, I've noticed them, that with her. Yeah. yeah. But she's a and distinguished Toastmaster. I, I understand that. But that's what Toastmasters can do for you, too. You can uh, uh, attempt to imitate mm -hmm. somebody who evaluates that well. You, you may not reach the mark. I know I won't reach the mark, but at least I was kind of surprised since I never met the woman before. And, and of course, all the other speakers are good. Same, mm -hmm. good, good experience. Well, somebody like Linda, she's like a mentor, and you can mm. pick things oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even with Kevin. Kevin has beautiful oh, yeah. gestures. Kevin's his good. arms, his hands. Oh, yeah, he loves Toastmasters. Yeah. He loves it, and you can feel it. Yes, yes, you can. Nick LeBeau. And same with the yeah. Imogene James. Nothing Imogene, more Imogene spirit, Special. Spirit. Uh, special woman. Spirit. Special well, woman. that's true. She yeah, brings yeah. a spirit to it. I know. So I enjoyed being up here. And it's a different yeah. perspective when you're up here <clears throat> looking out at the crowd. All right, so we're going to have a break, and then this afternoon we'll have our next meeting because we have two meetings on the first Saturday of the month and the second show will go along according to Hoyle and these shows will be shown on the next two Saturdays channel 34 at 7 p.m. and I hope you all enjoy Toastmasters in the community. Excellent.